In this video, we're going to focus on calculating the average atomic mass. So let's use boron as an example. So boron has two main isotopes, boron 10 and boron 11. Now let's say that the relative percent abundance for boron 10 is 19% and for boron 11 it's 81%. Using this information, go ahead and calculate the average atomic mass of elemental boron. So the equation that you need to calculate the average atomic mass is equal to the mass of the isotope times its percentage in the form of a decimal plus M2P2. And this can keep boron going. So if you have another isotope, it could be plus M3P3 and then plus dot, 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 dot. But we only have two isotopes. The mass of the first isotope is 10, and 19% as a decimal, if you divide 19 by 100, it's 0.19. And then the second mass, which is 11, times the percentage, which is 0.81. So 19% of 10, that's like 1.9. And 81% of 11, I'm going to use the calculator for that, that's uh, 8.91. So if you add these two numbers, you should get the average atomic mass for boron, which is 10.81. And so that's how you can calculate it. Now sometimes you might get this question in reverse. So let's say if you're given isotopes B10 and B11, and you're also given the average atomic mass, which is 10.81, uh, how can you use this information to calculate the relative percent abundance of boron 10, which we know to be 19%? And for some reason, I wrote B10 twice. And this is supposed to be B11 here. So how can we calculate the relative percent abundance? Feel free to pause the video and see if you can figure it out. So we're going to use the same equation m1p1 plus m2p2. Now the mass of the first isotope is 10. Now we're looking for the percentage or the relative percent abundance for the first isotope, so let's call it x. So I noticed that the percentage, which was 19% and 81%, these add up to 100. So 0.19 is 1 minus 0.81. So the way you want to solve it is if p1 is x, then P2 has to be 1 minus X. Because if X is 0.19, then 1 minus 0.19 is 0.81. And I meant to write 1 minus 0.19. So X plus 1 minus X is 1, which represents 100%. So if you write the equation this way, you should get the answer. So feel free to pause the video and solve it. So this is going to be 10x, and if we distribute the 11, we're going to have 11 minus 11x. And let's go ahead and add like terms. 10x minus 11x, that's going to be negative x. And if we subtract both sides by 11, 10.81 minus 11, that's negative 0.19, which is equal to negative x. So if we multiply both sides by negative 1, we can see that x is 0.19 or 19%. Now, x was associated with B10, so that means that 19% of boron is B10. And the other 81%, which is 100 minus 19, is boron 11. So if we had a sample of 1,000 boron atoms, 19% or 190 of those atoms would be the B10 isotope. The other 810 would be the B11 isotope. So now you know how to calculate the average atomic mass of an element as well as the relative percent abundance. Now let's try another example. So the average atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45. And the two isotopes of chlorine is Cl35 and Cl37. 
go ahead and find the relative percent abundance of isotope Cl35. So 35.45 is going to equal M1, which is 35, times x, plus M2, which is 37, times 1 minus x. So let's distribute the 37. So we're going to have 37 minus 37x. And let's go ahead and combine like terms. So 35 minus 37, that's a negative 2x. And at this point, let's go ahead and subtract 37 from both sides. So 35.45 minus 37, that's negative 1.5. 5, 5, and that's equal to negative 2x. So if we divide both sides by negative 2, negative 1.55 divided by negative 2, that's going to be 0.775. So we have 77.5% of chlorine 35, and 100 minus that number is 22.5% of chlorine 37. So you can see how we can calculate the relative percent abundance of each of these isotopes. And notice that we have more of Cl35 than we do have of Cl37. Cl35 is more abundant. We have 77.5%. And notice that the average is closer to Cl35. Um, the average atomic mass is really a weighted average. And so if you have more of one isotope than the other, the isotope that's more abundant you'll find that the average atomic mass is closer to the mass of the more abundant isotope. The same is true for boron, um, for the boron isotope. The average atomic mass for that was 10.81, and we had 81% of the B11 isotope, because 10.81 is closer to, to 11 than it is to 10. So, whenever you're dealing with weighted averages, the one that's more abundant, the weighted average, is going to be closer to that number. Let's try another example. Calculate the average atomic mass of silicon if given the following isotopes. Silicon 28, silicon 29, and silicon 30. So the relative percent abundance of silicon 28 is about 92.23%. And for silicon 29, it's 4.68%. And for silicon 30, it's about 3.09%. So using this information, go ahead and calculate the weighted average, the weighted average atomic mass of silicon. So it's going to be M1P1 plus M2P2 plus M3P3, since we have three isotopes. So the mass of the first isotope is 28. And 92.23% as a decimal is 0.9223. All you got to do is take the decimal and move it two units to the left. So plus the second mass, which is 29, times the percentage of 0 0.0468, plus the next one, which is 30, times 0 0.0309. So I'm going to do this one step at a time. 28 times 0.9223, that's about 25.8244, and 29 times 0 0.0468, that's 1.3572, and then plus 30 times 0 0.0309, that's 0.927. So let's go ahead and add these three numbers. 0.927 plus 1.3572 plus 25.8244. That's about 28.11. So that's the average atomic mass of elemental silicon. So now you know how to find the average atomic mass of, let's say, if you have two isotopes or three isotopes, you now know what to do. You can simply use this equation. Now, it might be pretty difficult to find the relative percent abundance if you have three isotopes, but it's fairly straightforward if you have uh, two isotopes. So, that is basically it for this video. 
And uh, so thanks for watching, and hopefully you got the, the point. You understand how to calculate average atomic mass, and hopefully you know how to calculate the relative percent abundance. So thanks for watching this video, and have a great day.